and we are honored to be with the children of God. Amen. I do not come alone this day. And the pastor said, I am here with my dad, the pastor, and my sister. Which she is a treasurer and secretary of the church as well. And I'm going to ask them to come so they can say hello and greet you guys from the next day. We run to the bank 
we ask our neighbor, neighbor, can I have a loan? I need to pay the bills. I need to pay for my groceries. I need to pay for the rent, for my car insurance, for the buffet at the Hong Kong, because something is all you can eat. And most of the times, we can understand that when there's no money in the pocket, we run to material man's gifts. Say with me, man's gifts. Man's natural gifts. It's not that it's wrong, but sometimes when we refuge ourselves to man natural gifts, we lose the sovereignty of our provider. Somebody said that he is our provider. He is the owner of gold and silver. He the one that makes a way where there is no way. And I will refuge myself and I will include him in everything that I do. I will not run to the bank first. I will seek that financial miracle through the eyes of Jehovah. Yes. When there's a sickness, when there's kidney failure, when there's diabetes, when there's uh, high pressure, when there's uh, epilepsy, when there's uh, all these kinds of sickness, what is that we first do? Uh, see, some of you are receiving your breakthrough right now in your deliverance because you refuge to that hypoprofen, you go to that elbow, you go to those pills, you go to those injections, you go to the man's natural gifts, and you forget Jehovah Rapha. Doesn't the Bible say that in the cross, that he took all of our sickness, he took all of our pain, he took everything in that cross, so sickness should not be manifest in your body. Tell your neighbor, I know I have a refuge. I know I have a healer, and his name is Jehovah. Yes. When your marriage, for those who are married, have those disputes, those fights, those arguments, because one didn't wash the dishes, and then grudge, and then resentment, anger, hatred comes upon you. All these can afflict and conflict your spiritual life and make you apart from his presence. The Bible says that he is the temple where the, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So patience, love, meekfulness, joy shall manifest in our lives. Amen. And most of the times, how do we know that we are not being manifested by the Spirit of God? Is when we allow that spirit of hatred, the spirit of anger, the spirit of resentment manifest in our lives. But tell you anyway, it gets better. It gets better than that. Because I can start including God and through the circumstance, through the situation that I'm going through, I know that I will overcome. I will overcome. And my faith will not languish. It will get stronger. It will get stronger. <coughs> Because I trust in Him yes. and I don't get angry at Him if He does it or He doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing where we need to include God in everything that we do. Because when bad things are happening in our lives, we can manifest our natural gifts and refuge ourselves to them, but then it's necessary to manifest our necessarily our ambition, our desire to refuge ourselves in the Most High. Yes. 
And this is where we can see that as children of God, we can grow in our spiritual lives. Yes. And not only when things are bad, but when things are good. Yes. Yeah, because I remember the times when there was no money in the pocket. You were the first one in church. You were crying out to God, break through. You were fasting and you were praying. You were speaking in tongues. You were doing anything to yes. see that miracle. But now that you have all the contracts, now that you're the employee of the month, now that you're receiving all the promotions, can I preach it how I am feeling it? Can I see it? Can I see it? Hallelujah. Some of you guys are having that nice suit, have that nice car, you know, you're receiving all that breakthrough, but then where is God? Where are those ties? Where is that offering? You know, you were the first one to say, my God, my God, my God, I just need that financial breakthrough. I promise, I promise God I'm going to give you all my check. I promise God that I'm going to sow into the ministry of worship. And then you make all these promises and then you fail. Am I speaking to somebody in this morning? Yes. When some of you were like, man, I need that healing, this fever, just take it away, give it to my neighbor, but just take it away. <laughs> and now that the fever is gone, you can't even bless your neighbor because he gave it to the neighbor. <laughs> Am I preaching to somebody this morning? Yes. yes. The Bible says that what can separate us from the love of God? Yes. Romans declares that not the heavens, nor under the heavens, nor the angels, no principalities or any spiritual identity can separate you from the love of God. Amen. The love of God has been you through every situation that you have been going through. It doesn't matter what it's called. It doesn't matter how long you have been going through it. God is in your situation. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is in your situation. God is in your situation. And this is where I like to paraphrase in the story that narrates in Matthew 15, verse 21, when the woman of Canaanite, she's seeking this miracle because her daughter has been tormented by a demon. Most of you have been, been troubled, have been tormented by demons that are being manifested in your family, in your generation. But this is your God-appointed time where you will see the hand of God work in your life. Because this is your season, this is your time, and this is your moment. Amen. And you got to understand that, that you can make your moments to be in the time of God. You can be in Kairos, which is God's appointed time. Like that woman of Canaanite, she made a moment to be in God's appointment time. Her time wasn't that situation for her to get the miracle for her daughter because Jesus was walking to the region of Tiro and Siro. He was going to a different direction, but in that moment, she provoked that Jesus can turn around and make her situation that breakthrough that will give her situation that deliverance for her daughter. But we need to understand this principle that how is God going to test you? Say to your neighbor, your patience needs to be manifested in your life. James 1 verse 2 says, Brethren, support the trials that you are going through because through that adversity, your faith will produce patience. So in that appointed time, Jesus ignored that woman of Canaanite. And what's so interesting is that that person that you think is, has that spiritual identity, that spiritual refuge, sometimes will ignore you. 
And it's hard because you're going to the church and you're crying out to the pastor, you're crying out to the man of God. Oh, and when you, and that disposition with that genuine heart to say, here I am, oh God. And the person says no word to you. Who? It's hard. It's challenging. Because most of you want that miracle like a microwave. <laughs> but you're not willing to go through the oven and let it bake. Let the heat of God manifest and burn. Make it a little bit crusty. Doesn't the Bible say when Nebuchadnezzar says, ah, in that oven weren't there three? Now I see four? Yes. What is happening in that fire is that the Holy Spirit, the God of yes. the Most High, the Ancient of Days, the Holy Spirit is burning through your situation yes. and will make you stronger. Yes. Can I preach it how I'm feeling? Yes. Yes. So in this morning, that fire is a challenge, a test to produce perseverance. Say it with me, perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance will manifest to my patience and to understand that even though he doesn't do it, he is still God. Yes. Yes. Even though he doesn't bring my miracle, yes. he is still God. Yes. It doesn't take anything away from his sovereignty. Yes. In that moment where she is crying out to God and being ignored, she's going through the test of time, through the fire. Her patience, her perseverance is being tested. And not only because she's being ignored by Jesus, but also because she's being criticized by his disciples. She's being humiliated. Tell your neighbor, you will not be humiliated. You will pass through the trial through humiliation. But you will not be humiliated. You will be exalted. You will be exalted. Because in that moment, where she was passing through that word of humiliation. The Bible says that he says that I have not come to give bread to the dogs, but to the children of God. If we put clarity to the word dog, it's bad. It's like, uh uh. My brother, you cannot do that to me. Yes. And then most of you, when you hear that man, you get your fist up. Yes. <laughs> you want to fight God's fight. Yes. Tell your neighbor, don't fight. No. You can win a spiritual war without a fight. Yes. Amen. How can you win? Let Jesus fight for you. Amen. Amen. Let Jesus fight for you. Amen. When you let Jesus fight for you, when you let God fight for you, through that humiliation, Matthew 5, verse 10, verse 11 says that blessed are those who pass. Let me read. Because I know it in Spanish, but not in English. Matthew 5, verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they reveal and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
the persecution, the trials, that I am the children of God, that I am beautiful, I am the apple of the eyes of Jehovah. When he says that you are a tail, he said, devil, you are a liar, because I am the head. When the devil wants to tell you that you are poor, man, you got to tell him, thank you, because everything that you say is opposite, it's lie. I am prosperous, I am blessed. And when the persecution wants to come to your life, say, I will receive it. Because after that persecution, after that trial, I know my promotion is coming. And I want to hear the children of God celebrate. Because now I can grow in faith, grow into the midst of trials, and overcome every situation and know that my promotion is coming to me now. And we got to understand that the days is not of tomorrow, it's the day of today. Amen. Your miracle is not the next retreat, the next time yes. that the bishop comes. Yes. It's not when the man comes, it's today. Amen. Amen. You make your time to be in God's time. Yes. Because the Bible says, by faith, is where we can seek Him and receive in Him. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So tell your neighbor, you, you gotta please God. You gotta please Him. It's just a little bit of faith or a little bit of faith. You are here because you have a little bit of faith. You see something in this congregation. Yes. Maybe it's the same 40 people, but you see that it will grow. Amen. And there's a prophetic word given to you that you will grow in abundance. Amen. There is a prophetic word given unto you that your spiritual life, your ministry will grow. Amen. I can't see it. Even the spiritual members of Jesus are criticizing me. You know, the usher, the bishop. What? Always getting on me because I have a government in the church. And small things like that. And you lose focus of where you want to go. But that woman of Canaan, I didn't lose focus. She pursued and pursued and pursued. Her perseverance and her patience was tested. And through that, she cried out to God. She cried out to God, not only through her lips out, but for her inner self out. And this is the most important thing that you must understand of anything that I can preach today, this morning. It's not how much hallelujah comes out through your outer lips. It's how much hallelujah comes from your inside to your outside. This is how we know how much God is inside of you. Your miracle is close as much as your lips as you can imagine it. So when she's crying out, Father, Father, God, help me. Father, Father, God, help me. That my daughter is being tormented by a demon. Understand with this faith, you will provoke breakthrough that will break the yokes of bondage of your generational curses. Am I preaching to somebody today? Yes. Those generational curses will be broken. I want you to raise up your hand and say, that generational curse will be broken in the name of Jesus. That generational curse of fornication will be broken in the name of Jesus. 
that generational curse of witchcraft will be broken in the name of Jesus. That generational curse of financial limitation will be broken in the name of Jesus. Say with me, every condemnation is broken in the name of Jesus. Every limitation is broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. She cried out. Then, after seeing her patience, after seeing her perseverance, Jesus says, woman of great faith. It's amazing that the one that is faith can say, you have faith. When you can stand on the word of Jehovah, when you can stand in his faith and say, now you have faith. Now you have pleased me. Now you have entered into my atmosphere. Somebody said, I have entered into God's atmosphere. And I will not leave. I will include them in everything that I do. In the midst of trials, through any situation that I can do, He is God. Psalms 37. says in this way verse 7 rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass cease from anger and forsake wrath do not fret it alone causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, say with those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Psalms 40 verse 1 says this in this way, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me from out of the horrible pit, out of my miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He was, He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and will trust in the Lord. Blesses is that man who makes the Lord in his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Today is your God's appointed time. Amen. It's time to endure. It's time to take that patience and let the Holy Spirit manifest and persevere and let your faith grow. Amen. Let that faith, like the grain of mustard, move that mountains. Make your faith provoke that financial breakthrough in your life. Make that faith that those who are seeking that healing in a kidney failure, diabetes, make that miracle happen in this.